Clint graduated from Cape Central and went on to the U.S. Naval Academy. Naval Academy is a little hard uh, entry. Uh, they turned, uh, turned down a lot of people and uh, select the very best. Its uh, acceptance rate is something like 8% of people who apply uh, go to the Naval Academy. So uh, Clint obviously did a lot of great work in high school. Graduated from the Naval Academy, entered the U.S. Navy, and did a six-year stint there. <coughs> Served in some combat situations with actually some U.S. Army units. And uh, came back and serves in the uh, Naval Reserve now. Actually just got promoted to uh, commander. So uh, congratulations on that recent promotion. After uh, he came back, he uh, ran for uh, a state house and won the uh, Missouri 158th uh, uh, district seat for the state house of representatives, served there for two years. And then when Gerald Jones retired, Clint ran for the presiding commissioner position and has held that ever since. Today he's with us to talk about a use tax, and we uh, certainly want to give a great Cape West Rotary welcome to presiding commissioner Clint Tracy. All right, well, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, and I'll apologize up front, you've got the third string. I, I never like to miss an opportunity to uh, brag on my associate commissioners, Paul Kepper and uh, Charlie Herbst. They're a pleasure to go to work with every day, and they bring a great amount of experience to the county. As you may or may not know, Paul Kepper's uh, uh, in a previous life, he was an engineer and, and spent a lifetime building roads and bridges. Continues to take over our, our county roads and bridges and does a, a fabulous job. Um, we go we go other places in the state and, and he really is looked to as the resident expert. Um, recently Charlie came on board and, and another a great asset to our team, uh, his experience with the city of Cape. I haven't run across anybody that doesn't know Charlie Herbers. And I'm sure everybody here does. Um, he's just a great, great guy to work with and, and tickled to death to have him on the team. Um, so can you see those guys around, tell them thanks. Uh, Thanks for the great job they do. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the use tax. I was a little concerned. I got out of my car and I saw the coroner's van in the parking lot. And uh, I hope that's just a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, taxes aren't a popular thing to talk about. And so I, a little, I don't see it down here. Place, so that's, uh, hope you didn't get a heads up. Anyway, um, use tax, that's why I'm here today. So anybody have an idea what a use tax is before we kind of get started? A use tax is basically uh, equal to a sales tax and it's applied to purchases made outside of the state by county residents. Now, in 1991, the state passed a use tax statewide is 4.225%. Uh, Cape Girardeau County does not have a use tax. The city of Cape or Jackson either have use taxes. And this came to light recently with a Supreme Court decision, there was a gentleman who bought a car in the southern part of the state. He, he bought it out of state. It was maybe even a trailer. He came came back to his DMV to register it, and the local DMV tried to charge him uh, sales tax on the purchase, like they had done for many, many years. He said, no. He said, you can't apply a local sales tax to this purchase because I bought it in Kansas or wherever. Bought it out of state. So the local sales tax can't apply. The case went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court found in his favor. So from that period of time, which was about 18 months ago, the Supreme Court said that local DMVs can no longer collect local sales tax on vehicle purchases. Now, the state is exempt from that because, as I told you, in 91, they passed a, sale, a, a use tax, sorry, which is equivalent to the state sales tax, 4.225. Since the county nor the, the cities have a use tax, that meant that that was a, a portion of our sales tax revenue that we were going to no longer be eligible to collect. Um, initial estimates of that revenue were somewhere around $250,000. So in a budget where we we spend probably $10.5 million, $11 million, uh, $250,000 is, is a pretty good chunk, um, especially when, when you look at business we do at the county. <clears throat> there's not a lot of fluff. We don't we don't do anything really extravagant. Probably uh, the most extravagant thing we do or operate is our park, and I, I think um, it's widely enjoyed by all residents. And I think we'd probably be in a lot of trouble if we tried to tried to stop operating our park. Um, at any rate, 
so this this use tax has been thrust into the spotlight and so there's this really is more of a, a business fairness proposal than it is a county revenue problem sure if, if it doesn't pass if it would go to the voters and not pass we'll deal with it and we'll we'll move on however the imbalance comes uh, and an example I gave was a vehicle so let's use that that is an example of use tax the, the unfairness portion is now you've got county and local governments incentivizing our citizens to buy vehicles out of the state. Well, uh, as an individual, that's, that's maybe good for each and every one of you because, hey, I, you can save, you buy a $20,000 car, you save 200 bucks on, on a 1% county sales tax that would be, a use tax that would be levied. <clears throat> However, we're, we're sending you out of the state to, to make a $20,000 purchase and turn that $20,000 over in another community seven times instead of supporting our local car dealers who are hiring local folks, uh, servicing your car, all those types of things. So that's that's where it really becomes problematic. And, and the car dealerships is the easiest example to use because that's the, the Supreme Court ruling and that's probably the biggest purchase besides the home that folks make. Um, so it's pretty impactful. But really, it, it applies to anything over uh, $2,000. Okay, so if you went, if you're looking at buying a building material, that's another good example. Uh, Paul and I, we went to Chester, Illinois, to do a little investigation on how 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 Illinois car dealers and other other sales operations how aware they were of the Missouri use tax situation and the, and the disparity, the, the the advantage that they have um, in doing business. So we went to the car dealership, and, and so they asked us where we were from and we gave them our zip code and, and they confirmed that yes you only pay for 0.225 percent uh, on the sales tax so that they're well aware of, of the advantage that they have marketing and, and I think there have been some flyers even come to come to this area advertising hey buy your car in Illinois you'll save you'll save uh, three percent in, in local and uh, county taxes so we went down the road to a, a building uh, building material store and so I went in and I said so if I want to I'm going to build a house I want a hundred thousand dollars worth of building material two by fours drywall insulation I said uh, I live in Missouri I said what, what kind of tax rate what are we looking at as far as sales tax and he said well give me your zip code and we went through the drill uh, because they know they have to collect Missouri use tax 4.225 so they're they're already aware of that and they're they're doing that currently he said well if you live in Cape Girardeau there's no sales tax, no no use tax locally, and plus, if you buy at least a truckload, we'll deliver for free. So, not only are you saving on the tax, they're going to deliver it to Cape Girardeau for free, and so our local business guys who sell building materials, that's tough to compete with when the when somebody in Illinois can can work on that three three and a half percent margin. <coughs> frankly, could even raise their price to within you know one percent and still undercut the local, the local uh, business folks so that's really the discussion um, again it's not really the county's position that hey we're in favor of a tax and, and we want uh, you know, more revenue i think it's important for us to make sure that everyone understands the discussion and that the business uh, people in the community are able to say you know what that's that's an unfair advantage and, and really explain how that affects the way they do business, the jobs that they provide. A local dealer showed up at uh, the Jackson City Council last week or two weeks ago. He talked about his 64 employees and how you know this this affects his business directly. Fewer sales mean that uh, maybe he doesn't need as many employees any longer. And those are those are folks who are employed right from our community. Um, the dealers they pay property tax on the property that they own that supports our schools. So there, there's kind of a ripple effect of this, and it's not an overnight change, but it's a systematic, uh, you know, progressive change that you'll see over the next several years of a diminishing tax base as business leaves the state. So uh, it's something, like I said, it's, I feel like it's our job to make you aware, and we're here to answer questions. Um, but really, this this is something that the business community uh, its biggest concern is theirs, frankly. So. Uh, with that, I'm glad to take any questions. Um, yes, sir. Walk me through this a little bit. 
knowing that the Illinois car dealers are much nicer and much less expensive than the <laughs> <dealers. laughs> uh, If I buy a car in Illinois, am I paying the Illinois tax and Missouri tax no. and the county tax? No. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. The legislature put together a temporary fix for the revenue problem for local local governments. Okay, so they, they said, we're no longer going to call this a use tax, we're going to call it a vehicle registration fee, and lo locality, uh, counties and municipalities, they can go ahead and continue to collect sales tax on new vehicle registration and used vehicle registration until November of 2016. So your local cities and counties have until then, they can continue to collect the, the tax, but they're expecting us to have a vote to change, to make it to decide yes or no after 2016 whether or not the, the government entities can, can collect uh, what will be a use tax. So you've got, we've got until 2016 to have a vote and to replace this temporary vehicle fee, uh, which frankly I think is still probably unconstitutional. I mean, if it, you know, if it walks like a duck, smells like a duck, looks like a duck, it beats a duck. So the, right now we're collecting that money, so we're not losing that revenue. But in 2016, if we don't, decide one way or the other, it goes away automatically. So that's where we are currently. That that This isn't an additional tax. If you buy buy a vehicle in Illinois, because you are a Missouri resident, you don't pay the Illinois sales tax. You tell them, hey, I live in Missouri. So they know that you only pay the Missouri portion of the use tax, which would be the same as the Missouri sales tax. So they're in, they're in the use tax and the sales tax are parallel. Sales tax applies to purchases in Missouri. Use tax only applies to purchases outside the state. So it's not in addition to, it's basically uh, you get to pay the same local tax rate on purchase, purchases outside the state. Yes, sir. Is there a problem with unfair competition with dealers in our county who also have something over in Illinois who's saying, we'll just run this through the Illinois office to save you a little money? Is that something that actually happened? No. <laughs> East St. Louis could be the next uh, <laughs> new car mecca. I don't know. Uh, that uh, I can't confirm or deny that whether that's happening. I don't know. Uh, I think there have been some advertisements and Tyson folks that come. I know in the southern part of the state, come to Arkansas, buy a car. Um, out west, come to Oklahoma, come to Kansas, buy a car, save the, save the local sales tax portion on the home vehicle purchase. Clint, even the state portion of the sales tax is collected at the license bureau. It's not collected by the Illinois dealer. No, that's right. And so I'm saying if this, with this temporary fix in here, we lose nothing as it is. Temporarily, no, we're, we're just like we've always done. But now, you register your car. there was a period of time. There was a period of time with that where you just pay the state rate. You pay the state rate, right. Yeah. And that will happen again if, if the county <coughs> doesn't pass a use tax and the cities don't pass a use tax. After 2016, the ability to collect that equivalent of a sales tax would go away. But now if I bought a car in St. Genevieve County, I'd pay it, right? Local sales tax. Because it's a Missouri purchase, you pay Missouri sales tax. Plus, plus the local county. And, right. So, so you buy a car in St. Jen or West Plains, you buy it anywhere in the state, you bring it back to Cape or Jackson to the License Bureau, and they're going to charge you, based on where you live, if you live in the county, you're going to pay 1%, that's our sales tax. Uh, Jackson's is 2%, so if you live in the city of Jackson, you pay the county plus the Jackson's. Is but if, if I bought $5,000 worth of lumber at a lumber yard in Illinois, they're going to collect the Missouri sales tax? Okay, here's, here's the caveat. So you have to take delivery in, in Missouri. So if they ship to your house $5,000 worth of lumber uh, through that, because you're not taking it on board there, if you pick it up at the lumber yard in Illinois, you're going to pay Illinois local tax. They don't care where you're from. But take delivery in Missouri, they're going to charge you, they should charge you, the 4.225 state use tax. And locally, I mean, that's it. If we had a use tax, then they would have to collect that and remit all of that to the state. All the use tax goes to the state, all the sales tax practically gets remitted to the state and then comes back to the municipalities. That's how the sales tax works. Um, so, yes. How does this interact uh, uh, internet sales? Internet sales, good question. Um, 
Today, if you walk into Target and you, and you try on a pair of sneakers and you find the ones you like, if you bought them at the store, of course, you pay all your local sales tax. State, Target's in Cape, so you're paying Cape City and County sales tax. If you go home and you order that same pair of sneakers and they're shipped to you from Target's warehouse in, I think, Wisconsin, you're only paying the state use tax 4.225 without a use tax here. So that's, that's current. So currently, you go in and you're using the facility, you go and you try on the shoes. Um, and over time, again, that's, that's I think, the creep is Target says, well, we don't really need brick and mortar in Caves or Auto Missouri. We can sell the stuff online. And so that's that's where you get into diminishing your property tax base, your, your jobs. Again, it's not overnight, but over time, uh, if they employ 100 people, now you got 100 more people looking for jobs because Target says, well, you know, we don't need, uh, we don't need to have brick and mortar. So with a use tax, you would, regardless of, of whether you shopped in the store or you bought online, you would, you would collect a use tax there. Um, a company like Amazon, who doesn't have it, what's called a nexus, which means a physical presence in the state, um, that's what the U.S. Senate is trying to address with their Interstate Commerce Fairness Act, um, to address companies like Amazon. Regardless of whether we have a use tax or not, you never pay, right now, you don't pay sales tax, you don't pay use tax, you don't pay any tax on purchases from Amazon because they don't have what's called a nexus, which is a physical uh, presence in the state. So anything you buy from them is, comes from out of state. So you, uh, even with the use tax, we wouldn't collect on Amazon purchases until, unless uh, Congress, U.S. Congress, deals with the, what they call the Fairness Act, the Market-based Fairness Act. What is, how does our county sales tax compare to other counties? In, in, uh, in percent up or down or, or total across the board? Percent up or down. Um, right now we're about 1.8% up from last year. No, no, I'm sorry. You mean total So now? is it 1%, is, do all counties charge 1%? No. That's um, what I mean. It, it varies, there's 114 counties in the state and everybody has has their own well, you got to know whether we're high or low. Oh, we're, well, uh, as far as one percent, it's probably average. Uh, that's it's probably about average. It brings in uh, six six and a half million dollars in uh, sales tax. It's also a lost revenue to the city, though, isn't it? Before yes. Well, and, and this is why it gets a little confusing because each entity has to pass a use tax. So. There's three scenarios. If you live in the county, okay, let's say that the city of Cape, Jackson, and the county all have a use tax question on the ballot. If you live in the county, you're only going to have one question, and that's shall the county have a use tax, yes or no. If you live in Jackson, you're going to go on the ballot, and it's going to say shall the county will be question one, and then question two is shall the city, or the other way around, doesn't matter. But you're going to vote on two use taxes, one for the city, one for the, one for the county. In the city of Cape, same thing. You vote on the counties because you live in the county, and vote on the city of Cape because you live in the city of Cape. So technically both could fail, both could pass, or one or the other could pass and the other one couldn't. So there's four four outcomes. So this applies to any purchase of over two thousand dollars? Yes. So currently the state law reads that if you buy something in Illinois and they don't <coughs> normally do business in Missouri and they don't know that they're supposed to collect a use tax, you're supposed to self report. You're supposed to pay the tax now. Um, How's that working out? <laughs> um, yes. um, so that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, if this passes, you have that two thousand dollar threshold, and actually at the two thousand and first dollar you owe on the whole amount if you self-report. That's that's how that works. There's and it's in calendar year, so that's that's kind of how that works. But like I said, Jackson's sales tax is two percent, counties is one percent, caves is I think three seven five, something like that. So um, basically, it takes away an advantage from buying something out of state. You're going to pay the same amount of tax regardless of where you buy something. Um, and, and back to the cars, uh, part of our our sales tax revenue supports Road and Bridge. That was Prop One. That was half of the one cent that we had. Um, that money goes to, to hard services and, and the sheriff, it's shared. 
but technically, the use tax, you're going to buy a car in Illinois and you're going to bring it back to Cape County and use it on the roads that technically you didn't help pay the taxes for. So that's that's kind of a fairness issue uh, as well. So. What is our, our, our immediate neighboring of counties? Okay. I think this is a question that has started back here while we're Okay. Um, Recently, in the last election, so uh, Perry County and Perryville put it on the ballot, they passed it. Bollinger County had it on the ballot, passed it. Uh, Scott County put it on the ballot, it did not pass. They're going to revisit it, I think, and put it back on the ballot in November. Um, Dunklin County passed it probably, uh, there's 56 counties that have the use tax today. If you look at a map, the majority of those are north of I-70 along the Iowa, Kansas border. There's a, there's a few more in southeast Missouri. Uh, so like I said, 56 total. Uh, and I think that's it for food. Flat, uh, just reading what was in the paper when you all had your uh, public hearing, it sounded like those people were really negative. It didn't sound like you had much of a crowd, but uh, did I read that correctly? Were they real negative? Well. Part of this, this, the hurdle is talking about a tax, so automatically you have a negative connotation. That's great. Uh, but to explain why, and then it's not a double tax, and, and how, you know, some folks will just be against this because they want to be able to say, hey, I'm going to save the money and I'm going to shop out of state. I want to get the best deal I can, and, and that's fine. Uh, you know, they go to vote, they'll vote no. Uh, but for people who understand, if you're if you're a business owner and you're trying to compete with that, that makes a difference. Uh, so while I think when, when when you when you learn about it, when you ask questions, when you think about it, people make up their own minds. Like I said, it's our job to make sure that they get the, the, the information in, in kind of a non-biased way. Um, what the facts of the matter are, not not what the perception is that most. Most business people that are in competition, like uh, car dealers, say, "Hey, this is this is something that, that levels the playing field for my business. Not fair. It's not fair." So, uh, building building material guy will say the same thing. I mean, that's it's kind of ridiculous to think that um, a local guy can lose out on a hundred thousand dollars worth of business uh, because we have some screwy tax thing. We don't have a tax that makes it fair that I can have stuff shipped free from forty miles away. Sir. When um, we will have another public hearing, we, we kind of started the discussion with um, in the time frame to put on the April ballot. We will not put on the April ballot. I think we'll probably continue the discussion and hopefully uh, we'll do our part in, in the education <coughs> piece of explaining what this is. And, and if the business community picks picks up and says, "Hey, this is something that we're willing to get behind, and this really is for us." And, and I think that's uh, we would look at the earliest opportunity that they you know, that they would be willing to support that. Uh, so the earliest would be April. Would be the earliest day. Probably. Next April. Probably. Well, it could be as early as no. No, uh, April would be the next available available time. So we're, we're in uh, September now. So that's a fair amount of time. But you also have to get Cape and Jackson geared up so they'll get their thing on about the same time, Well, right? the, the reason for the delay was so that the cities can, can kind of put together a plan and, and instead of trying to educate three different groups of folks at three different times, it makes sense to lay the discussion out and have everybody decide at once. If the, if the goes to vote does not pass and 2016 comes around, I mean, can that registration fee, whatever you want to call it, can that be renewed, or is that a one-time thing? Uh, it's not set up to be renewed, so it's supposed to go away. Right. And, and frankly, I'm not sure that it's any more constitutional than than what we were doing in right. the past. So, you know, that my, like, I guess my thought is, yeah, everybody hates the T word, and you know how people come at you with torches and pitchforks when it's time to add a tax to something. But if it's just added as this fee, well then they're like, oh, well, darn, it's a fee, you know. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, is, if you don't buy anything out of the state, then you don't have to pay tax. Right. So, 
if you were to purchase something in Illinois and it was delivered to Cape Girardeau, would you still have to pay the Cape Girardeau tax because you're taking possession of it in Cape Girardeau? Use tax or sales tax? Sales tax. No. Without a use, because because you are purchasing it in Illinois and bringing it back to Cape to Missouri to use, if you have a use tax, you would pay a use tax. Without a use tax, no. Somebody from Illinois buys something in Cape Girardeau. And I don't, I don't. If you're going, does it work the other, the other way? Yeah. I'm not sure what. Uh, if, if somebody from Illinois buys something in Cape Girardeau and they take possession of it in Illinois, they don't have to pay Cape Girardeau tax. They pay their Illinois. If it's tax. being delivered, yeah. It depends on if they have the use tax. So if they have a use tax, yes, they would have to. If they don't have a use tax, of course, <coughs> they would work the same way. And and so in, in you know, full disclosure, there are businesses who, uh, during the course of their operation, that that uh, buy things in the course of their business operations that they can't find in Missouri or <coughs> County that they have to buy out of state that previously they probably weren't paying taxes on that could possibly end up paying a use tax on. So for them it would be a tax increase. And there are a few of those businesses. But that's uh, each, each business would have to know, you know that themselves. They, they should be self-reporting the, the Missouri portion of the use tax already, but if, if the county and the cities uh, added their portion of the use tax, then that would, that would affect them. There's mud. Yep. <laughs>